We are going to look at the proper use of visuals when we are presenting. Many people ask us, Dale Carnegie, what should I do with preparing my slide deck for my keynote presentation? What's too much? What's too little? What's the best way to make this work for me? That is what we will explore in this week's show. Welcome back to year four of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, master trainer, president of Dale Cunning Training Tokyo, Japan, and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. And my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, will be released shortly. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are looking at giving you a big edge in business in Japan. Let's all be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 205, Slide Decks and Presenting. So let's get going. Here's some guidelines for using visuals. Sometimes less is definitely best. On a screen, try to avoid paragraphs. Try to avoid sentences. If you can, use single words. Single words can be very, very powerful. Just show one word or even just one number. And then you can talk to the number or you can talk to that word. Or use just a photograph or a simple visual and you talk to the visual. Bullet points are also minimalist and good. By the way, you don't have to crowd the screen with stuff that we can read for ourselves. What you really want is for the audience to be focused on you, the presenter, and not what's on the screen. This is very critical. We don't want the screen competing with us. So the less you have up there, the better. I believe that the two second rule is a key rule. If you're putting something up on screen and an audience cannot see that and understand that within two seconds, it's probably too complicated. Strip it back until you can get the point immediately. The six by six rule means less is best. Six words on a line, six lines on a screen. Again, keeping it very minimalist with fonts, try to use 44 font size for the title and 32 for the text. In terms of font types, sans serif fonts like Arial are very easy to read. Whereas a serif font like Times, Times Roman, which have got a lot of additional fancy work, can be distracting. Be very, very, very sparing with using uppercase, all uppercase. It's actually screaming at your audience. It's shouting at your audience when you use strong uppercase like that. You can use it, but use it strategically. For visibility, be careful about the overuse of underline. Yes, you can use underline, but use it sparingly. Bold, yes, you can use bold, but the same thing, use it occasionally. Italics, well, very rarely use italics. It's not so easy to read. You can use them, but use them modestly. Find out more, we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the High Impact Presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience, everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the high impact presentations course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? 
really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Welcome back. With transitions, sometimes it's good to reveal one concept at a time because there's only one idea on the screen. You can talk to that and you're not competing with a lot of words on the screen at the same time. Sometimes maybe have all the content up on the screen at one time so people can read it for themselves as you go through it. Just be aware of the point of the differences in the usage. Pictures are great. Pictures have a lot of visual appeal. And as we say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And a nice photograph of something that's relevant, of people, a book or a picture or whatever, works well. People can look at that and in two seconds, they've got it. Now, they're ready for your explanation about the relevancy of this picture to your talk today. Bar graphs make it easy to compare items. When you want to compare different variables, bar graphs are very good for that. Line charts are great to show change over time. You can compare two or three items over time and it's very easy to see the one's up and this one's down and that one's flat. Pie charts are fantastic for showing parts of a whole. What's the share of something? As long as there's not too many up on screen at once, then a pie chart works well. This is usually the big fail with a lot of presentations. They put up way too many pie charts at the same time. Avoid doing that. Colors are tricky and you rarely see people using them well. Colors like black, blue and green, they work very well on a screen. They're the best colors. Stay away from oranges and grays and particularly red. So for establishing some contrast, black and blue work together well to, as a contrast. Green and black also work together well as a contrast. They're good colors to mix and match on the screen, black and blue, green and black. Red, however, can be hard to see, so use it sparingly. Apply these simple guidelines when you use visuals and you will avoid the most common mistakes which we regularly see in presentations. When it comes to presenting, very few get it right. So you can go straight to the top by just having a better understanding of what to do and what not to do. I hope you enjoyed today's show and so please subscribe on YouTube. Share with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Hit the little bell icon to receive update notifications. Our website details are on screen now, www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. It's packed with value, so certainly check it out. We try to offer as much value as possible, so you might also enjoy our other shows. In fact, we are releasing content six days a week for podcasts Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday for the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday for the Business of Tatsujin no Oshie Show, Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series, Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday for the Business Pro Podcast Show, Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show and Saturdays for Japan's top business interviews. Now you get these wherever you get your podcasts. Also, every Monday we release the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Every second Thursday we release the Business Pro Telebi Show. And every Friday the Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, every Saturday we are releasing Japan's top 
business interviews. These are all on YouTube. We appreciate your support and please let others know about it so they can benefit too. We want to make a contribution to helping people build their careers and businesses. And so please join with us in that endeavor. In episode number 206, we're talking about Nemawashi is a key skill in Japan. So, Yoroshiku, Onagai Tashimas. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you. I've got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.